Hello and welcome back to Hot Swine 4. Uh, at the end of last episode, we had a choice. We had to elect a new Stadthalter for Middle Africa because of the scandal caused by the release of the Black Dossier, which sort of detailed a bunch of atrocities and a bunch of uh, corruption scandals, uh, kind of directly linked to uh, the Stadthalter Hermann Göring. And because of that, we have to choose someone new. So I went ahead and looked at the new colonial regime options and the old guard options. And the uh, new colonial regime options will give you uh, such options as Ernst Junger, which are, which is a uh, a uh, a World War One veteran and a um, an author, like a novelist or something like that. And uh, he's quite famous, quite popular in in. Um, uh, the 19th century, or so 20th century, for his uh, his sort of uh, his influence on German nationalism and militarism, as well as some other options. Uh, I didn't really resonate with any of these uh, the choices here, so I'm going to check out uh, Reform right now and see what happens there, and then we're going to unpause and see what what. Uh, what our follow-up event is going to be. Alright, so we only get one option. Reform stat halter. Reform is the only possible way to prevent mistakes like the von Goering administration. For too long, the German residents of Africa have been without democratic representation or relying on virtual representation from absentee votes in the Reichstag. We will set up a more democratic administration in Middle Africa, but who shall oversee the transition? Well, we have one option, and that is Theodor von Hassel. The pioneer of reform. Let's see who that is then. First, uh, Middle Africa needs to get the event, and then after that, we'll see. I need to unpause, of course. Of course. There we go colonial reform in Middle Africa. For years, the elaborate web, web of uh, German colonies in Central Africa has proven to be an enigma to many outside observers. Public knowledge of the inner workings of this opaque heart of darkness has increased recently due to transparency and public relations uh, drives by the Reform Group uh, re uh, currently w running the colony. It appears that the Reform Group has made the bold decision to overhaul Middle Africa's uh, by uh, Byzantine system of rule dominated by colonies, puppet kingdoms and former British territories. Ready plans have been set out, establishing autonomous kingdoms for loyal African leaders under German stewardship, with future action planned for further decentralization. In only a few short years, Africa's fate has changed forever. The Dark Continent is now a tad bit brighter. Okay, so we've got uh, a man with an amazing hat. I do not re regret my choice at all. And he... Uh, looks to be decent. He's going to be... I get then tearing down the the system and and building up independent or sort of autonomous uh, colonial vassals, which I think is probably uh, the like the 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 best option essentially for for Africa. It is the uh, uh, the. Like, the most obvious good option. Also, I did look into the Focke Wolf thing. And uh, Focke Wolf was its own design company, formed in 1923. And uh, it... Uh, it did eventually... Uh, get merged into a different company after the Second World War, uh, which would then go on to become one of the predecessor companies of Airbus. I didn't find like anything very interesting when I uh, just did some cursory Google uh, Google searching, checked uh, the Wikipedia article as well as a couple of other uh, lexicons, or sort of um, uh, I don't know what what to call them in English other um, encyclopedic entries.
right, Birmingham is gonna fall in uh, a matter of days or hours and London might actually also fall uh, in February no actually they're, they're still sending troops over we need to isolate their ability to actually send reinforcements into London in order to actually take London, I think. At peace with Andorra. Andorra joined the war against us in France, but after the defeat, Andorra has no, had no ties to the, uh, the new commune and aligned itself with Spain. Um, okay, so we're working to sort of figure out a strange sort of uh, diplomatic... Um, abnor uh, like... Aberration, essentially. A Andorra is over here, right? It's somewhere up here. Madras declared war on the Princely Federation. Well, I mean... Good luck, buddy. Bereit zum Ausrücken! Right, let's see, we have enough light tanks right now, I think. And we have enough infantry. The fall of London. Reports from London confirm that the capital of the Union of Britain has been ca captured by advancing German troops after long uh, staged battles across the Thames River. British forces put off stif a stiff resistance, hoping to delay the German forces for as long as possible. But were eventually beaten back. For the first time since William the Conqueror, London has fallen to a foreign invader. The, the atmosphere in the city is heavy. Gunfire is still ringing at night as the British forces long left, leaving only protesters and German military police fighting, the, fighting in the streets. Speaking of which, oh, also that's kind of cool. You got the uh, imperial flag there hanging from uh, from Big Ben. Yeah, speaking of which, we need to get um, some of our military police over there. I very much doubt we're going to uh, carry out a prolonged military occupation of, um, of Great Britain. I think we're probably going to set up a, a sort of a puppet... Uh, uh, puppet... Uh, state kind of deal here. Yeah, let's sign a non-aggression pact with the Brazilians. We have no in intention of invading Brazil in, I mean, probably not this decade, uh, and maybe not even the next one. Alright, let's reform Middle Europa. AKA like the the imperial version of uh, of uh, the European Union. Right. Um. I was kind of confused there. So I think if these guys were attacking and the tanks had not yet reached the front line, which means they just get like. Put back on into London. Um, if these guys break off their attack, it's kind of strange. But I think I roughly understand why it's happening, or why it happens. Why it, it like the game decides to um, uh, handle the conflict in that manner. We are getting low on manpower. We had, I think, well, we have 1.2 million in the field. I don't know how much manpower we had at the beginning of um, of today's recording, which was the beginning of the recording of episode 8. But considering the rate at which we're losing manpower, I'm going to guess we had maybe a couple hundred th uh, hundred thousand uh, more. Uh, that's equipment details. Yeah, we still have 1.2 million in the field. Let's um, check the current wars and check. There's a lot of wars. Uh, let's uh, check the casualties here. Oh no, we probably didn't lose that many then. We probably lost... 
maybe 50,000 to 100,000 during the invasion of, uh, of Britain. We're not going to call Germany Station into this. We could, and they would be helpful, but I want to have uh, I want to have their soldiers over here in Asia at all times. I don't want to like leave them open to an attack from any of the um, well anything in this kind of slight mess that is Asia right now. To be fair, the the entire world is a mess right now. We can't do medium tanks yet, and I don't think we can do... Oh, actually, we can. Um, I'm going to do improved infantry equipment one first, and then do the MG support equipment stuff afterwards. We're not getting anywhere with any of this stuff. Actually, never mind. I, I spoke too soon. It seemed like we were, we were just like uh, stuck for a while, and I saw all the uh, the low organization on a lot of these troops. But uh, oh, but uh, they are any worse uh, worse uh, state than we are. So eventually, I, I suppose we will make progress. Let's see here. So we had a. Notification of something. The da uh, a dangerous. Uh, no, not a dangerous naval invasion, but we have naval combat. We have the new pride of the fleet, which is. But do we even have a pride of the fleet for our fleet? I don't think so, actually. Republic and Navy ship. Um, Rebecca and Freedom, and this is. Republic. See, let's look at our ships and see if we actually have a pride of the fleet. I do not think so. Let's uh, name one of our dreadnoughts our pride of the fleet then. And actually... Oh, never mind, they're repairing. I don't know where they're set to, um, to attack, but um, let us set up a couple of extra strike fleets in case we can, first, so that we can sort of attack um, the Republican Navy when it comes out here and help uh, the battles that are already going to take place. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see. We have the Beowulf. A Siegfried class. Does it say how many kills it has to its name? I don't think it does. Oh, here we go. So it's uh, sunk two dreadnoughts, three dreadnoughts. That one sunk the marks. Land and labor. Liberty. Yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of dreadnought uh, sinkings from ours here. Uh, we should call. I think we should call the Kaiser Wilhelm our pride of the fleet, maybe. It is an improved dreadnought. We do also have the Moss, which is the uh, what the Moss class is called uh, or named after. Uh, it doesn't have any sinkings though, because it's exclusively fitted with carrier fighters. Probably sort that out in our templates uh, later on. Yeah, we have no, no other ships here that have like an absurd amount of experience. Most of them, in fact, have very little experience.
Uh, does it say what uh, template this is using? A Z-Class. Okay, so not the UZ-Class. So it doesn't have the sonar, but it, it could still hunt for submarines, I suppose. So I will send them out to... Is it patrol you send them to? Uh, if you want to hunt for submarines. I think so. And yeah, we want to get the improved spotting chance. Alright, let's uh, unpause again. Dude, I love the music. Exclusively the finale of the 1812 Overture. I mean, I, I like uh, a lot of the 1812 Overture, but um, I am very happy by the fact that they have a single song in this, which is literally just the finale. Alright, let's uh, send our tanks around here. Again, these are light tanks, we're not going to be using them for a lot of uh, frontal assaults. I know we have been using them for a lot of that stuff, but I kind of want to use them to attack weak points. We're, we're going to mass them for, I suppose, frontal assaults on weak points, but yeah. Exploit weak points like this one, for example, and try to get around and up into the, um, uh, the northern parts of the United Kingdom here. It's very interesting how symmetric this uh, this war is here right now, the Civil War. I think the Combined Syndicates of America are slightly ahead of all of the other uh, competitors. The Pacific States, though, are doing very well. Usually you don't see them doing this, uh, this well. Yeah, I think the CSA are going to slowly but surely push the AUS back. Which is going to lead to the deal with the devil, where the Pacific States and the American Union States uh, sign a armistice until the war is uh, over between the command syndicates and well them. Let's set up a, another front line here and let's assign this new one over there, as well as those two over there. Actually, no, we'll assign one of them. Oh, we'll assign another one as well. Just to uh, hold the front line. I am fully expecting and counting on the French Kingdom to sort of deal with this stuff if there is a war between us and the uh, the Spanish, but um, apparently they don't have any troops here, so I want to stop them from getting sort of bum-rushed, just losing too much uh, strategic uh, uh, ground. This is already extremely good ground to defend because of all the mountains and stuff, and because of the these mountains, which... Uh, uh, limit the width of uh, of this front uh, quite a bit, which works to the advantage of both sides. Spain clearly has the advantage in this case, though, as all the mountains that go sort of deeper into Spain. Spain is kind of like, in terms of uh, of fighting, in my opinion, uh, fighting wars in in uh, Hardzone Four. I, I feel like Spain is like the Afghanistan of Europe. It's just very tough terrain to fight in. A lot of mountains and a lot of um, uh, a lot of um, rivers, and not like in in my opinion, not terribly great uh, infrastructure. 
obviously not, not uh, bad infrastructure like you have in Afghanistan and Russia and stuff, but with the amount of troops that get packed into these mountains, I think the infrastructure usually doesn't hold up. Right there, Crimean took four states and Dominion of India took one from Nepal. Okay, Nepalese Socialist uh, Republic. Wait, the Kingdom of Burma wants our help against the Kingdom of si uh, Siam. But yeah, because we guarantee their independence. I suppose this is a... Uh, one of the reasons we, we kept the uh, German East Asia out of the war. Let's accept, and let us call Germany Stacia. And in fact, let... No, let us not call Middle Africa. They already haven't sent any troops anywhere, so actually let us call them. We might want to, we can request their forces and send those forces just over to, uh, to Asia here to, to help out, but I think shoving more troops into an or let already sort of tenuous uh, supply situation right now is not going to help. The Mashriki Kingdom capitulated, but the Rashidi Arabians are still, are still holding on here. Rocco wants to join, sure. Yep. I'll allow most of these people to join. I will not accept the Duchy of Brittany because I want you to keep your soldiers over here. At Ukraine, I also want to keep uh, keep their soldiers here. Fine. Okay, so we've reformed Middle uh, Europa, and yeah, this is the actual like, EU stuff. Oh, okay, they're just getting called in by the other other nations. Oh well. Yeah, we need to get Heinz Guderian, but we need that political power for, uh, for us to do that. Um, let's hold on to the political power. Once we take this, uh, all of this stuff is uh, technically encircled because they have no port uh, access in order to ship supplies out of their, their capital. What happened here in South uh, Africa? The Unionists won. Or sorry, the, the, Dom the Dominionists won. And I'm guessing that means that they are friendly towards the Dominion of Canada. Or am I incorrect? I mean, I, I guess we'll find out if they join the intent. Yeah, all this stuff is just repairing stuff in London or in, in England. 
This is an insane uh, encirclement, actually. This is so beautiful. Um, we need to send the tanks in as well. Let's keep rolling. Keep rolling, get all of our troops in, get those uh, uh, British troops uh, surrendered, take their equipment, and get our troops back onto the line over here. I should probably actually set the offensive line to be further back now, since we are advancing quite rapidly. I'm a little surprised that the um, they haven't begun running out of supplies over here. Okay, cool. We've got radar technology, which means we need to start building radars. And we should build one, I think, over here, uh, because radar not only gives you uh, information about the air, but also the sea. So putting one uh, here in like the Schle Schleswig uh, Holstein area, uh, or sorry, northern uh, Schleswig, gives us. Um, uh, intel on submarines and stuff that hunt in this area. We will also put one in Flanders. And we no longer control all of this stuff, so we can't put any here, but we can put one over here on Ceylon. And one over there. And good measure, one over there. And that's about it, I think. We have any other African islands here? I don't want to build any here because I don't think it's going to give us any usual or useful intel. I really want to take uh, so. I kind of want to invade Denmark just to take Iceland and Greenland because they serve as excellent naval bases for uh, the purpose of raiding the. American coast or invading America proper. Because we can't take Bermuda, which is also an excellent base for that exact, uh, exact purpose, but yeah, we can't take that without angering the Canadians and the French Republic, which then gets us involved in a rather messy and long war. Well, it can be long, but it, it can also be short, I suppose, if we uh, plan it correctly, but either way, we're going to have to fight in Canada, which is not fun. And we're going to have to fight in Africa, which is doubly not fun. Okay, we are... I didn't even notice. We have reached the cap on, uh, on army experience, so we just need to actually pump that into uh, Doctrine research right now. gonna do the research stuff fuck the political power for now i want the extra research uh, research uh, slot okay now there's uh, like properly encircled here and this is also a very very proper encirclement if we can take uh, liverpool here this uh, should fall very quickly and Honestly, we don't even need to take Liverpool. We can just rush up north here. Start taking the rest of the country while their entire army is, like, stuck down here. This invasion is going swimmingly. We are losing a lot of uh, men. But I think it's worth it. Unless we're losing something like a million over the course of this entire campaign, uh, basically ending the war against the syndicalists is more than worth it, uh, in my opinion. 
like 300,000 losses or so is uh, not a big deal. Okay, so now we have the deal with the devil, which I referenced earlier. In which case, the American Union state and the Pacific state have signed an armistice. Let us crank down the submarine construction and let us crank up the destroyer construction of the UZ class. And let us build. Let's build some escort carriers here. Fucking Boris Savinko. Uh, he's fighting the Turkestan Khanate and he's fighting Soviet Russia. He's going to lose. There is no doubt in my mind. The Soviets are going to win. We're going to have uh, Bukharin's autonomous uh, socialism, I suppose. I Or it might end up... Um, he might end up falling to some sort of internal power struggle, which, uh, you know, is not unheard of in the Soviet Union. Access treaty with Ireland. Uh, in exchange for a non-aggression pact and Germany guaranteeing their independence. Yes. Sure. Not that we necessarily need it right now, because we just took Britain. Again, I'm using the uh, player-controlled peace conferences uh, simply because it makes it easier for me to avoid a lot of messy um, and, in in fact, like frankly, silly situations where uh, all of the territory gets like divided up in very strange uh, ways. You have like French snaking territories upwards this way, and maybe like Canadian here, and then German here and stuff. Just makes no sense. Why are we allowed to take Mexico, though? I that I don't get. I'm. Did the Canadians invade or something? Was I just not paying attention? I'm gonna go back and watch the video to figure out what what just happened here. Anyways, that is that is the end of uh, of essentially the the core of the Veldkrieg, or the second Veldkrieg. End turn. Done. We took thirty nine states. It's over. Let's check the current wars. We're currently at war with uh, Thailand still, but that is going to be over at some point. That's like a regional conflict, not a big world war. Yeah, that is the end of the Second Weltkrieg, but that is not the end of our playthrough. Okay, so we have annexation decisions here, destiny of Italy, and the fate of Mexico. Let us balkanize Italy and make the royal house come to Piedmont, or come back to Piedmont. Sardinia has accepted. The question of the formal, uh, former papal states. A recent annexation of northern Italy has left us with remnants of land that according to the peace treaty of 1919 should uh, pertain to the Pope. We thus have the option of returning it to its rightful owner, either freely or conditioned to their submission. We could also uh, simply continue the occupation of these lands. Let us give them the land for a submission. The Pope has refused our deal. Well, fuck, now we just have garbage Italian land. Um... The fate of Mexico. The 
where's Yucatan? So that's Yucatan. Uh, so we could split Mexico from Yucatan and release Mexico and have sort of occupied territory over here. Mexican Empire, puppet of the German Empire. Mexico becomes a puppet, a puppet of the German Empire, but not the Mexican Empire. Oh, Yucatan becomes its own thing. And liberate Mexico under a friendly government. Let us liberate Mexico. I don't know how long my my microphone has been muted. I'm st I'm so terribly sorry for that. Uh, like sooner or later that that uh, was gonna happen. Uh, with me muting my mic every now and then when I take a drink and such. Uh, I was I think it I muted it right before I talked about her, uh, who was yeah uh, the the Doña of Mexico. But either way, this is gonna be uh, the end of the video. After having ended the Second Weltkrieg successfully, now begins the reconstruction effort, the reorganization of Europe, and finally, the preparation for the next war. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.